Now, the Legend of Zelda series is known for its medieval setting, with stuff like swords, bows, dragons, demons, gods, and magic. However, when Nintendo was reinventing the series with Breath of the Wild, they started to include some weird stuff in the game. A lot of sci-fi-esque concepts, like the Guardians and other ancient Sheikah technologies such as the Sheikah Slate. And they even wanted to add even more crazy stuff like aliens invading with freaking UFOs, and in the final game we even got a dirt bike. However, apparently Apparently, this wasn't the only time they were thinking of adding actual sci-fi elements to the series, as well as other outlandish concepts. And this wasn't even recent, but way back in the day. So what were they planning? In which game did they want to include this? And what happened? Well, let's find out. Be sure to check out Wiley.gg if you're in the market for any games, and use code Wiley to get 5% off. Now let's continue with the video. Now all of this started around 30 years ago when the Legend of Zelda series wasn't that old yet, and Nintendo was still experimenting with it a lot. I mean, the first game was very different from the one that came after, and when they wanted to make the third game, they were gonna experiment once again. The second Zelda title wasn't the best after all. Sure, some people liked it, but it was also very clunky in ways, and so they wanted to go in a different direction once again. Now in 1988, development of a new NES Zelda began, but one year later, the project was brought to Nintendo's next console, the Super Famicom, also known as the SNES here in the West. Due to this, they had more power than before, and as we all know, more power means more options, especially in the early days when electronic devices weren't that strong, to be honest. Now in the end, a number of ideas and features were in consideration for the third Zelda game, but many of these were cut during development. However, a lot of these were absolutely crazy to say the least, and some actually did make it into the series. Now surprisingly enough, the people over at Nintendo were already considering adding sci-fi themes to the very first title. The idea was to let the main character travel between the past and the future. Now this wasn't too interesting. I mean, personally I think the idea could have never worked with the limited technology back then. Just look at the original Legend of Zelda. You can clearly see that the 8-bit art style and power of the NES was not enough to create concepts and as complex as that, but as we all know, they did add it to one of the games when they finally made the leap to 3D, which led to the iconic Ocarina of Time. However, this wasn't the only thing they were planning, because the Triforce was going to be a trio of electronic chips originally, that would play a role in the whole adventure. As you can imagine, that is super sci-fi, and would be a better fit for a game like Cyberpunk, and obviously it could have had huge effects on the lore of the series. The Triforce is one of the most important artifacts facts in the franchise after all. Some of the most well-known deities in the series, like the Golden Gods, who made the Triforce according to lore seen in Ocarina of Time, could have been cut from the series entirely if they went with this computer chip concept. And the idea didn't die there. When they were developing the third Zelda game for the SNES, the team considered the idea of a science fiction backdrop once again, as demonstrated by concept art of a sci-fi Zelda revealed in the Hyrule Historia art book. There she looks like some sort of space explorer instead of a princess. And while we have seen Zelda as a pirate, we have never seen her like this. And Nintendo actually had a whole plan for the game, as well as this art, to add a bit of a sci-fi twist to A Link to the Past. Because in a 2017 interview, director Takashi Tezuka also revealed that the third Legend of Zelda game was originally going to involve a multi-world structure, where events taking place in the hub world would have an effect on the others. And while we did get two worlds, they wanted to add another one. The original plan was to add three worlds, one of which may have been a futuristic or sci-fi world set far into the future, as suggested by the concept art. But Nintendo felt that three worlds would be too confusing for players and reduced the idea to just two instead. Now I think the plan was to bring back the time travel theme that they still had in the back of their mind. I mean, they wanted to include it in the first game, but weren't able to. Most likely 
likely due to the limited resources. But now with a new console, more space on the cartridge and more pixels, they could make some sort of time traveling game. And I bet one of these worlds would be set far into the future, not just seven years like we saw in Ocarina of Time. For example, it could have been set 100 years into the future, in some sort of post-apocalyptic world that was ruined by Ganondorf. But the technology would have been very advanced, which would have allowed for all kinds of interesting design choices in dungeons and also stuff like robot enemies. But in the end, this didn't work and we just got the Dark World and a completely different story that built on top of the medieval aesthetic with the Sages, Knights of Hyrule and the Master Sword. And so we never got the sci-fi experience. But still, remnants of it are seen everywhere in the series and even in A Link to the Past. For example, enemies like the Bemos and Armos that were seen in Ocarina of Time or Vi, which is basically a form of AI inside of the Master Sword. And then if you look at A Link to the Past, you can see loads of pretty advanced technologies like the switches, teleporters and even conveyor belts. So sure, in the beginning, this sci-fi angle didn't work that well, but it's clear that as the series developed, more sci-fi elements did make it into the games. However, this wasn't the only thing they were experimenting with, because Shigeru Miyamoto also wanted Zelda 3 to adopt an RPG-like party structure. His original idea was for Link to be accompanied by two companions, a magic user and a fairy. Now in the end, this didn't happen either, and another idea of multiple paths throughout the game also didn't make the cut. That idea was mostly abandoned due to memory constraints. It would require 150% more memory than the NES had. And so in the end, a lot of ideas were abandoned, and we got a link to the past. A game that did keep some of the medieval RPG elements, but no sci-fi, party system, or open world with multiple paths. But a lot of these concepts were seen in other games, like the robot enemies in later Zelda games, as well as many other cool technologies like cameras. Now, when it comes to the RPG stuff, some of it was seen in Breath of the Wild, with the weapons and armor. And clearly, the fairy was used in Ocarina of Time, as well as Majora's Mask. And at some point, Nintendo did want to make a Zelda spin-off that was going to be a classic RPG game. It was known as Heroes of Hyrule, but in the end, the game was never made. But I might make a video on it in the future. And when it comes to the open world, we had finally seen this in Breath of the Wild. Sure, some others experimented with it, like the Wind Waker, but still, you were limited in certain ways throughout the game's story. However, all of this changed when the Switch came out, because as we all know, you can do anything in Breath of the Wild. And who knows what they will include in Tears of the Kingdom? As we have all seen, Nintendo loves reusing old ideas, and they are clearly experimenting a lot with the series once again. And I even made some videos about that, so be sure to check them out! Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe, click the bell button, like, press, like, comment, mm, yes, words. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this video, if you wanted to see more stuff like this, let me know. Suggest stuff down below, I read with my big eyeball, I read your comments, yes, yes. Also, I'm very excited for Resident Evil 4 Remake. It's like three weeks from now, it comes out, I want to play it. Grrr.